Hello students, uh, so this is the post test discussion of the full length test 3. Uh, I'll be taking the questions from science and technology, environment and ecology and geography. This question paper had a lot of questions from environment as we have seen uh, in the trends also these days that you're getting a lot of questions from environment. Now oh, my one suggestion when it comes to environment questions, there will always be a mixed bag of questions which are based on the basics and the questions which will be current affair based. But still. Uh, unlike science and technology in environment, you get a lot of questions on the basics. You get a lot of questions on the plant kingdom, animal kingdom, how different sort of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, interactions, biotic interactions, uh, for example, symbiotic relation, commensalism, etc. So, my suggestion would be stick to the basics, especially in this particular, uh, you know, area. In environment, you get easily 15 to 20 questions if you do it very well. So, uh, without further ado, let us take the first question here. This question talks about methane. Methane which is a very potent greenhouse gas, much more potent than carbon dioxide. Uh, so, which of the following are the sources of methane? Paddy fields, fossil fuel consum consumption, garbage dumps. Now, always remember, whenever there is organic material decomposition, even if I don't know, uh, let's say there is something else. Whenever there is a decomposition going on, for example, fossil fuel consumption, I can say power plants. I can say uh, the uh, exhaust pipes of my car. So, yes, carbon, uh, uh, you know, CH4 or your methane, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. These are the major pollutants which are, uh, you know, uh, adding up to the air pollution. Apart from that, garbage dumps because of the anaerobic conditions in which the organic material is decomposed. So, this is also the option and paddy fields, yes paddy fields, uh, when it comes to agriculture, the rice cultivation or paddy cultivation along with cattle because uh, uh, the uh, cattle in their gut, the production of methane takes place. So, cattle and paddy field from the agricultural sector are one of the major, major sources of methane production. Even the gober, uh, gober gas uh, system which is for uh, production of energy using the cow dung. Actually, it is methane which is produced, which is then converted into energy. Difference, uh, th uh, there is a change and then it is used as the heating source. So, I think this was a fairly easy question here. Now, coming to the second question, it says, uh, now, latest groundwater resource assessment in 2020, there was a groundwater resource assessment which was done and uh, just remember uh, different different blocks, taluks, mandals, they were categorized based on the uh, use of water, how much use uh, water use has been done. So, 70 percent, had it been less than 70 percent, that is the groundwater usage is less than 70 percent, it was still considered safe. Beyond this is over exploited, then they have also categorized them uh, depending on the salinity. Uh, we know that there is soil acidification, then there is soil salinity which takes place when due to the capillary action, we know those basics. So, whenever the groundwater is having high concentration of salt, then even those areas have been categorized as saline. So, yes, this is also correct. Approximately 30 percent is saline, no, that is, that is a very big ratio. 30% is one third of the country, no, one third of the country is not in the category of saline. So, as you can see here, based on the stage of extraction, stage of extraction which is SOE. If you go and search, I want you to search the uh, groundwater assessment report 2020 and you will see a very beautiful map of India in which uh, there have been markings, the areas which are have uh, based on the uh, you know, stage of attraction, they have marked different areas where the groundwater extraction has been, let's say, uh, optimum has been more than what is uh, sustainable, etc. So, it will help you in two things. One, of course, in your prelims, you might get a question. I personally feel that it is difficult to get questions like this, but for your mains, it will be extremely useful for your answer writing. So, yes, I would suggest go through that map, keep it in mind, try to make it in your notes. Next is the National Adaptation Fund on Climate Change. This fund uh, has been in use. So, uh, there are National Adaptation Fund and then there is State Adaptation Fund as well. So, what is the role? So, it was launched in 2015. 
If you remember 2015, uh, if you remember Paris climate deal, India had been very, very proactive when it comes to climate change related initiative. In fact, India is among the top 10 countries when it comes to climate related indexes. So yet, yeah, this fund was created around that time, just for you to remember. And what is the role of this fund to meet the cost of adaptation to climate change for the state and union territories? So, especially which are vulnerable. So, what can they be? They can be the coastal areas, they can be the Himalayan region, they can be the Western Ghats, etc. NAVARD has been designed as the national implementation, uh, implementation uh, entity, yes. And this is what is a concern that no new projects have been sanctioned after 2018 and 19. In your explanation, there have been given the uh, details about it. Now, coming to the acidification of ocean. Now, ocean acid acidification. Uh, now, let us look at the options here. It is an ongoing increase in the pH, so it cannot be correct. As the pH increases, it is basic that is above 7 pH. Below 7 pH is acidic, so this statement is incorrect. It is majorly caused by the uptake of nitrous snow. It is the carbonate ions which are produced. Uh, oceans are the biggest carbon sink. So, they extract a lot of carbon from the uh, atmosphere. In fact, they are also called as the uh, biggest source of carbon sequestration also. So, they are carbon sinks. So, it is not nitrous oxide or sulfur compounds. But along with them, it is basically the carbon compounds which lead to the acidification of uh, oceans. Third option is correct that it changes the marine ecosystem why the overall temperature changes the overall chemistry of the uh, marine ecosystem changes and a lot of fishes coral reef bleaching leads uh, you know uh, ocean acidification leads to coral bleaching ocean acidification leads to a death of millions of smaller species it also inhibits the growth of plankton etc all right the explanation has been given here now coming about the benthic zone so uh, before taking on this question, generally students believe benthic zone is in the interiors, in the interiors, the bottom of the ocean. But you have to understand the benthic zone starts from the coast, that is the lowermost portion on which there are different different layers of ocean. Now this is called the benthic zone. So you cannot say that it is only in the interior. So this question has first option that it is characterized by low temperature and low pressure. Low temperature correct but the pressure is extremely high. It is characterized by high pressure. It is the region extended between high tide and low tide levels. No, it is the region which extends throughout the globe in all the oceans right from the coast till the interiors of the ocean. And uh, most organisms are scavengers or detrivores. Reason being this ocean does not receive light. This, this portion of the ocean does not receive light or receive, uh, uh, this is basically dark and hence uh, you do not find a lot of variety of animals. They are mostly either detrivores or scavengers. The explanation for the same has been given to you here. The main reason is since there is no light penetration. Now, coming to another question which is on green hydrogen, uh, there has been another question in the coming, uh, in this paper only on the green hydrogen project. Now, you have to understand, recently if you search, uh, Press Information Bureau or PIB has released notification on green hydrogen and green ammonia. So, uh, green hydrogen and green ammonia project are taken up, they are considered as the uh, Clean energy, why it is considered as clean energy because it does not have any byproducts which harms the nature. How do you, uh, so it is produced, let us talk first about the green hydrogen. It is produced using coal where the emissions are released, no. It is produced from natural gas, no. It is produced by electrolysis of water using renewable energy, absolutely correct. You basically do the electrolysis of water, what is water? H2O. So, you basically break this bond and hydrogen is released and with the release of hydrogen, a lot, a huge amount of energy is released. Why is it still not a reality? Because 
वन इट इज वेरी कॉस्टली सेकेंड स्टोरेज ऑफ लिक्विड हाइड्रोजन इज एक्सट्रीमली रिस्की इट इज हाईली फ्लेमेबल एंड यू डू नॉट हैव द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर राइट नाउ टू सपोर्ट दीज प्रोजेक्ट बट ये फॉर योर प्रिलिम्स एज वेल एज मेन आई हैव अ पर्सनल हंस यू कैन गेट अ क्वेश्चन ऑन ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन और कमिंग वेरी क्विकली टू दॉटर कन्वेंशन आई थिंक दीज आर वेरी स्टैटिक क्वेश्चन यू कैन डू देम योर सेल्फ now coming to which of the following pollutants are emitted from building materials leading to indoor air pollution for this i would suggest that who has given out a list it is from that list this question will be formed or if you get a question in your prelims also so who has given formaldehyde you have benzene you have radon which are among the 7 to 8 uh, pollutants or chemical uh, pollutants for the indoor air pollution particulate matter unburnt hydrocarbon are outdoor air pollutants so again my suggestion you simply google that what are the indoor air pollutants given by who and you will get a list i want you to have that list in your notes if you are not able to find please reach out to us my name is karuna mishra i am a science and tech and environment faculty and take geography as well so if you are not able to search them yourself please reach out to me through whatever channel and i'll help you with that all right now coming to the mukurthi national park now for national parks you have to understand india has a lot of national parks wildlife sanctuaries you need to keep an eye on the newspaper why this particular national park has been asked before even going into the options one uh, have you heard of the shola forest of the nilgiris so the shola forest of the nilgiris uh, sholas are these beautiful vegetation beautiful uh, you know shrubland forests and they are one of a kind and hence they support a very distinct kind of biodiversity one being nilgiri tar which is uh, a symbol of nilgiri biosphere system or biodiversity now what happens is that these shola forests are uh, facing summer fires every year due to the high temperatures and what the tamil nadu government has done is created fire breaks in order to uh, curb the fires and this initiative has been taken in mukurthi national park so hence this national park is important it is in the tamil nadu region so it is spread over two states no it is spread only in tamil nadu rest all the three options are correct very very quickly let us move on Uh, i think these biome related questions are extremely easy the moment you see that porzolic soils and fairly deep porzolic word has been come from burnt ash uh, from russian dialect they have taken this so basically uh, these are the deciduous forests what is the big biggest catch the biggest catch is that the trees shed their leaves in the winter season and it has warm moist summer and cool winters so warm moist summer and cool winters can be temperate deciduous forests only in russia you find these kind of forests the name also has been taken of the type of soil from this particular forest only you find porzolic soils in boreal forests as well now coming to uh, ficus elastica now again why this question came these are uh, the living root bridges of meghalaya i think you would have seen the pictures uh the cm of meghalaya has sought the world heritage site status for the living bridges root bridges of meghalaya and hence it was in news this was of december 2021 i think um, mostly this is uh, the time when the cm of meghalaya or meghalaya sought that these living root bridges which are these marvelous bridges should be given the world heritage site status and hence the question has been asked now this is the problem of these kind of questions if you do not have an idea then the options are so confusing that you are bound to make mistakes so i personally say do not take a chance do not you know go by the hunch there is high probability of you doing this wrong and getting a negative marking now coming to the ccus or carbon capture and storage for carbon capture and storage chemical absorption which is generally done in the power plants uh, where uh, once uh, 
यू नो यू पास द गैस थ्रू द चिमनीज एंड देन द जनरली द अमीन्स और द केमिकल्स दे एब्जॉर्ब द एक्सेसिव कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड और कार्बन कंपाउंड्स देन यू हैव द मेम्ब्रेन गैस सेपरेशन इट इज for uh, when the overall uh, production of carbon and carbon related gases is comparatively slow oxy fuel separation when oxygen is being used calcium looping is a more advanced way of uh, it is in fact a second stage i think it they would have given yes it is a regenerative calcium cycle also called as rcl it is a second generation carbon capture technology it is generally it is the most developed form of carbonate looping what do you do here here a metal is reversibly reacted between its carbonate form let's say co co co3 to separate carbon dioxide from the gases coming either from the power generation or from the industrial plants now uh, the chemical separation is generally in the post combustion where conventional solids solvent they rely on the uh, chemical absorption to remove the carbon dioxide oxy combustion oxy fuel consumption uh, combustion is uh, where uh, the primary fuel is combusted in oxygen in pure oxygen instead of air which produces flue gas containing mainly water vapor and high concentration of carbon dioxide up to 80% and hence it is removed it is uh, it basically gives a pure stream of carbon dioxide and hence it is easy to be separated the other two methods are not the methods for carbon capture and now coming to another uh, tiger reserve now this is basically because recently madhya pradesh has overtook uh, karnataka madhya pradesh has 526 tigers whereas karnataka has 524 tigers so based on that news this question has come baksa tiger reserve is among those tiger reserves where the forest cover has increased but it is not the highest forest cover the highest forest cover is of arunachal pradesh that is pakki yes it is uh, uh, now for example baksa annamalai indravadi they have shown an increase they have shown an increase but it is the pakki tiger reserve which has the highest forest cover and the top performer are number 1 madhya pradesh followed by karnataka followed by uttarakhand now coming to the 15th question again very very easy question ecosystem services all of these are part of the ecosystem services the moment you start the environment and ecology understanding or uh, study these are the first few chapters similarly which of the following are the possible reasons of habitat destruction and deterioration all of these livestock pressure how livestock pressure for example the neel guys destroying the fields and the forest then you have agricultural expansion in which you clear the good forest region in order to expand the agricultural field and of course human conflicts and war are also responsible you can see that uh, Uh, even the pets are uh, uh, in a lot of frenzy especially in the ukraine russia crisis people are literally leaving their livestock their animals and running away and these animals have nowhere to go so this this right now is the biggest example how human conflict and war are responsible for destruction of habitat now uh, coming to the next question yes now this question needs for you to have a little understanding from your ncert because when i read this question it says consider the following organisms rhizobium nostoc azola cyanobacter which can be used as bio fertilizer now always remember there is a difference between organic fertilizer and bio fertilizer organic fertilizers are fertilizers which are produced from organic material do not have chemicals bio fertilizers are when microorganisms attach themselves either to the plant or they are present in the soil and increase the overall nutrition of the soil or are helpful for the plant growth so i am 100% sure about rhizobium because i know that rhizobium beta carotene i know that it helps in uh, nitrogen fixation i am kind of sure about cyanobacter also what i am not sure about is nostoc and azola so yes nostoc and azola are also the organisms 
are also different types of plants that enhance the productivity of soil. So I want you to write it down. What is cyanobacter? Blue green algae, seaweeds, they uh, increase the enrichment. Along with that, you have Anabena azole, you have Anabena cyde, you have Azola pinata, and you have Nostoc, which enhance the overall productivity of soil. Now, coming to the Deoras, Kavus, and Darwada Kadus. Now, uh, I think again and again, it has been repeated in your prelims. They have asked about, let's say, what are Schedule 6 species? schedule five animals this has been a question in i think prelims of 2019 or 20 uh, the wildlife protection act of 1972 has to be done very very well this protection act had been amended in 2002 and in that amendment they have also provided protection to the sacred forest so these are the example of sacred forest maharashtra Bihar, Rajasthan, Meghalaya, Karnataka, these uh, Kerala, these are the uh, states which have uh, a lot of sacred forests, which have very distinct type of, uh, you know, flora and fauna, especially flora, especially the uh, plants. And also these are called sacred groves because they are worshipped by the tribes or indigenous people of these region. All right. So, uh, as you can see here in Kerala, they are called the Kavus. Uh, whereas in Rajasthan, Bihar, Maharashtra, they are being called as Devarais or Devarais. Uh, you have a lot of concentration in the Pune, Ratnagiri, Raigad region. Uh, these are the questions from economy. I think the next questions will come. There is question number 26. I think uh, this question is from Science and Technology, a fairly easy question. This has been marked incorrect. Please, again, this is not the right answer. This is not the right answer. The right answer is B. It is talking about radio waves. Just a short trick. Even if you don't remember the entire spectrum, always remember radio waves are long wavelength waves. If it is long wavelength, do you remember wavelength is? inversely proportional to frequency all right so if the wavelength is higher the frequency will be low what is frequency if i understand in layman language it is speed all right so my radio waves are having the maximum wavelength the frequency is low and since it has maximum wavelength, it can carry a lot of data on it. A lot of data packet or information packets can be transferred or can be, uh, you know, put across a radio wave. Hence, whenever there is communication of any sort, it always uses radio waves. All right, I have very limited time, so I just want you to remember a few things so that you don't make mistake. One, it is the longest wavelength out of all the knowns. Yes, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, are they communication uh, waves? Yes, they transmit information between the uh, devices using radio waves. Radio waves cannot diffract and tend to go straight. No, a small example, your mobile signal is best when you are in an open area but let's say you are in a mountainous region or inside a building there is obstruction why because the radio waves get obstructed so no radio waves cannot uh, can be diffracted and do get diffracted all right now coming to the next question which is i think question number 30 all right so again, this, this is a very fact-based question. There was an event which is called the Great Conjunction. It was between Jupiter and Saturn. Why Great Conjunction? Conjunction is these planets came relatively very, very closer and could be seen from Earth. It happens in uh, three to 400 years. And uh, why it is called Great Conjunctions? Because these are the two biggest planets of our solar system. Our solar system. All right. Then we have 35th question. All right. The 35th question, I think uh, there has been questions of this nature asked in 2019. 
uh, which talks about which of the following can be used uh, achieved using nanotechnology yes so nano missiles nano missiles is one emerging platform which is used for drug delivery for the eye nano missiles is not just used for drug delivery in the eye but in the entire body as well so conventionally nanoparticles are considered to be hydrophobic so what they have done is they have the outer coating of hydrophobic and inner coating is water soluble drug so the drug reaches the target area and then only it releases the a drug and hence it is targeted delivery as well so the second option which says that the drug delivery uh, it delivers the drugs at the cell level using dna based nanostructure yes and manipulation of nanoscale biological specimen such as bacteria virus in the human body using light yes all of this has been achieved using nanotechnology so what are the technologies which are being used here for drug delivery you have made 2d and 3d nanostructures out of dna now dna has the property of self assembly combination of dna nanostructures can be used to make drug delivery system so you have used the 2d 3d structures at the nano scale which can do the drug delivery and you have created nano tweezers technology nano tweezers technology which uses light for uh, you know targeted delivery now again a question on bio fertilizer now you have to understand bio fertilizer it helps to improve the ph level and soil fertility it can be obtained by composting biodegradable no i told you there is a difference between organic fertilizer and bio fertilizer and it improves the photosynthesis no only first it basically improves the soil fertility it is some microorganisms some mi uh, micro plants etc now uh, another thing question which is on internet of things in internet of things it is an internet working of physical devices absolutely correct the devices in internet of things grid do not need human authentication every time for the transfer of data outside and for the functions all devices need need to be connected to the same local network again the answer here marked is wrong these two options are correct in internet of things you do not need human authentication every time but no uh, you can have public networks also on which the internet of things work that is how even internet of things has been integrated in the government buildings not in india but yes abroad in india also it has come in colleges schools etc so first and two are correct that is option b is the right answer then again a very simple question on lithium ion batteries you can do this yourself i think then uh, you have question number 40 i guess yes uh, i think uh, these are the latest quantum computers again in science and technology a lot of time you get questions which are static in nature you have zhuzhang tangle lake and sycamore these are the quantum computers that have been developed by the chinese hence it is a lot of you know a, a, a cause of concern for india because india still is doing a lot we have the missions which is basically targeting the quantum technology but we have we are yet far far behind our neighbor when it comes to quantum technology and quantum technology is the future that is the future of computation that is the future of handling uh, the data the quantum of data the amount of data that has been produced daily in and out can be managed only through quantum technology so hence it is a cause of concern another question i think extremely easy question it is not the chromosome it is the dna is which are the building blocks of genes and dna throughout the body whether in blood cell hair skin are the same now coming about the 3d bioprinting what is 3d bioprinting for example uh, my eye is a problem so i'll create a 3d uh, print of an eye that is called 3d bioprinting so it is basically additive manufacturing it is a form of additive manufacturing that uses cells and other biocompatible material yes it prints living uh, living structures one by one yes you have successfully 3d printed an eye you have successfully 3d printed skin ear liver etc 
I think uh, the 3D printing of I was a very important field, especially in uh, done in uh, UK. I think another question from hydrogen fuel cell combines oxygen hydrogen. Yes, we know that. Then commensalism. I think uh, you need to remember commensalism, symbiotic commensalism, mutualism, etc. That has to be remembered here. And again, these are very obvious questions. Arrange the following from east to west. This you have to do the mapping here. Uh, now, come, uh, taking an example of this particular question, you have to remember there are very few limited biosphere reserves and you need to remember the important biosphere reserves. Now, these kind of questions can be asked any time, whether they have been in news or not. So, my suggestion would be for all the biosphere reserves, you should know. For biodiversity parks, you should know. And if there is some particular species, especially you get a lot of questions from tiger, elephant, etc. You need to know what are the areas where they are found. Uh, about the plant tissue, animal tissue, even if you don't remember, just remember xylem is for the water mineral transport, phloem is for food. Phloem, food, xylem, water. Phloem, food, xylem, water. And you will be thorough. These are the tissue systems which are, uh, these are the vascular tissue systems and uh, they help in the transportation of food and water. So, uh, both statement 1 as well as 2 are correct. These are uh, some indexes. Flocculation now. Flocculation uh, is in news. Why? Because we are targeting a lot on a treatment of effluents from the industries and this term is called flocculation. So, this is important. You should have this in your notes. So, what happened is the solids, they form a large cluster and are called flocks and they are to be removed and this whole system is called flocculation. Here, especially heavy metals and metals industries are the target where they are done. All right. So, plastic waste management, if you remember, uh, your Prime Minister was extremely passionate about removing one-time plastic. So, this question has been formed on those. The plastic waste management amendment rules as per the promise by the Government of India was on the one-time plastic use that not very thin plastic. Uh, the thickness of the plastic bags needs to be increased beyond 50 microns, etc. I think these are all the questions from Science Tech and Environment. I'll hand over uh, the discussion to Rahul sir. So we are discussing here uh, the post test discussion we are taking. Now we will move to history and politics section. Now ma'am has already covered your geography, your environment portion. So I will be taking your history and uh, history and politics section. So let us move directly to question number 52. Yeah, question number 51, it's very easy. Uh, yes, if you understand question number 51, if you see this question number 51, the cave, the cave is carved into hard monolithic granite rock face of Barabar Hill. So, the Barabar Hill is one of the clue that is given to you flying by the Sudama Lake. So, you understand that this cave is in the Barabar. Now, it is a curved archi architrave consists of carvings of elephants on their ways to stupas. Now, we should understand this Barabar caves. These were the earliest, uh, earliest rock cut caves in India. There is Barabar caves and these were given to the Ajivika sect. Ajivika sect by Ashoka. By Ashoka during the Mauryan time and these are nothing but the Lomas Rushi caves. Right, very easy question. Uh, so this Barabar Hills in the Bihar region, in the Bihar region. So uh, from this only you should understand that which are the caves in the Bihar region. Only this Lomas Rushi caves. Now the 52nd question number was also very easy, but it is in terms of uh, in the current relevance, it is very very relevant question. Now the question is you asking about the model code of conduct. Before that. Question number 51, uh, the question on Ashoka, the various initiatives taken by Ashoka, the policies of Ashoka, the places where Ashokan pillars are there. So, these are very, very important. So, you need to focus more on the personality 
पर्सनैलिटी ठीक है ना दिस मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट ट्रांसफर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट से ट्रांसफर ऑफ एन इलेक्शन ऑफिशियल विदाउट प्रायर अप्रूवल ऑफ द इलेक्शन कमीशन सो द क्वेश्चन इज आस्किंग विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग अमाउंट टू वायोलेशन की कौन सी चीजें वायोलेट करती है मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट को फर्स्ट इज ट्रांसफर ऑफ एन इलेक्शन ऑफिशियल विदाउट प्रायर परमिशन यस इट डज वायोलेट बिकॉज यू के नॉट ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ इलेक्शन यू के नॉट ट्रांसफर और मूव a person who is appointed at that time uh, from his duty without the prior approval of election commission second is about combining official visit with electoring work by the prime minister uh, this is not a violation but when we take the other council of ministers and the other uh, member of uh, assembly member of parliament yes that is violation of your mode of मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट दट इज एमसीसी ठीक है प्राइम मिनिस्टर इट इज एन एक्सेप्शन अटेंडिंग इंडिपेंडेंस डे सेलिब्रेशन बाय द चीफ मिनिस्टर यस दे कैन अटेंड द चीफ मिनिस्टर्स कैन अटेंड दिस इज नॉट अ वायोलेशन ऑफ द मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट सो वी हैव गिवन यू अ लिस्ट वेर यू कैन सी द मॉडल कोड ऑफ कंडक्ट इज वायोलेटेड right so no transport including official or aircraft can be used during the time of election total ban on transfer and posting of oppo on officers so all this uh, are given now with respect to citizens charter what do you understand by citizens charter basically it's a document right it's a document which tells you how the organization would give you the services yes this how they will provide you but it is is it enforceable for example you take the uh, you take the example of any of the organization right in today's e-commerce organization they are telling you to that we will deliver this kind of service in this much this much time but that is not enforceable that is not enforceable so the question here is asking is incorrect or not right so it is not legally enforceable and therefore is justiciable it is not legally enforceable that is a service that is a citizen charter a document they are telling that we would govern or we would run our organization so that the service would be delivered very nicely it would be a standardized service so it is about it is talking about the standard of service delivery it is talking about the responsibilities of the citizen Includes the vision and mission statements of the organization, but it is not uh, what you call justiciable. Now the next question comes is the CIC. How is CIC appointed? It is appointed by he is appointed by the president, but on the recommendation of a committee who includes prime minister, the leader of opposition, and a person and a person who is. Uh, uh, who is recommended by the prime minister so this three member committee is formed which has prime minister the member of uh, the leader of opposition and another member is there another union minister is there who prime minister selects now with reference to state finance financial uh, relations the property or income of corporations and companies owned by the state cannot be taxed by the center so this statement is incorrect it can be taxed for example if this is if this is a center if this is a state if it in the state of gujarat man lo so the property or income of corporations and companies owned by the state cannot be taxed by the center and if something is been taxed by the center it will be applicable to all the bodies but whereas if in a state if a certain uh, all the property of a center within a state is subject to state taxes no they are exempted they are exempted so both this statement are incorrect what do we mean when we say fundamental rights are not absolute what is this absolute it means they are not complete they are not complete they are not completely free or they are not uh, you know you can do anything you can do anything it means uh, fundamental rights doesn't mean you can do anything you can ask for any rights there are absolute they are not absolute 
it means some kind of restriction and what are these restriction they are reasonable restriction so re reasonable restrictions are there are applied on this are applied on this fundamental right so they are subject to reasonable restrictions so the answer is c now question number 57 with res with reference to parliamentary privileges consider the following statement there is no law there is no law available codifying all the privileges yes they have been taken from different different parts from the constitution from the rules of parliament from uh, from the codes of civil procedure now this codes of civil procedure 1908 provides for freedom from arrest of members yes because they uh, want we want the independence of this parliamentary procedures uh, so that no kind of uh, restriction or destruction is there in the working of this parliamentary process members can be questioned by an outside body for any vote given inside the house no this statement is incorrect they cannot be questioned because immunity to a person from proceedings in any court in respect of the publication by or under the authority of either house of parliament or any report paper votes or proceedings right courts are also prohibited from inquiring into the validity of any proceedings in the parliament on the ground of an alleged irregularities or procedures now the preamble preamble of the indian constitution terms india as a republic in this context what do you mean by this the word preamble the preamble of india of indian constitution terms india as republic in this context consider the following political sovereignty not vested in a single individual is it in the invested in the single individual in india no it is not it is in terms of where it is uh, uh, it is given to a single individual when it's a monarch where it's a monarchy so demo so this democracy when you talk about democratic or democracy democratic in nature that is of republic style and one is of monarch style absence of privileged classes yes there is an absence of privileged classes are not vested in a single individual yes it is correct statement is correct all public offices are open to every citizen without discrimination yes without discrimination they are open so this all are the meaning of republic so this was a very easy question where you see uh, question number 1 2 3 are all correct question number 59 with reference to government of india act 1858 1858 so after 1857 we see the response of the british government that first they took over the power from the british uh, from the east india company in their own hand and that is by passing the government of india act 1858 so also the two uh, the two boards that is the board of control and the board of control and court of directors they were abolished and all their powers now were given to the secretary of state and in india the governor general was made the viceroy so it created a new office of secretary of state yes this is correct with complete control over indian administration it ended the system of double government what do you mean by double government that is the court of directors and the board of control who had different powers one had only commercial the other had the other powers it ended the activities of the east india Com company as commercial body it was not in 1858 it was in 1833 only that unka monopoly khatam ho chuka tha right now so this statement is incorrect rest both are correct so the answer to this is one and two only question number 63 question of the term bali the term bali bali whatever you called it was used in the ancient indian history is related to so it is related to bali basically it's kind of a tax it's kind of a tax which developed in the form of a voluntary voluntarily offerings to the king you know after see vedic period mein there was no certain tax 
बट इन द लेटर वैदिक पीरियड लेटर वैदिक पीरियड यू सी दैट पीपल आर नाउ स्टार्टिंग अटैचिंग देमसेल्व टू द टेरिटरी and this is the only time after that you see a uh, lot of janapadas are starting to come so the territorial love for territory starts to come over here and also people start now that our cow should be protected so who is protecting the king the king the ruler will be protecting them the head of the clan will be protecting them and now how do we pay him so they used to offer something to the prince and that was known as bali you called it tax or you called it no tax that is you are uh, you can take it as uh, as you want it but it kind was a offering they had to give to the princess theek okay, so this was in the later vedic period now a, uh, a by election is conducted you have by election so when is this by election by election whenever a, uh, in a particular place if that happens so why that it happens if a candidate is elected from more than one constituency obviously he would have to give the represented uh, the uh, one constituency alok he would have to choose if an elected candidate dies yes then also we have a by election if the winning candidate resigns this also we have a by election but when there is a case of tie among the top two candidates then the returning officer the returning officer decides or they can go in the uh, or the court decides by a, uh, by the form of a lottery system so you see and if the question is not determined such a decision any decision made by the returning officer would be effective and if the question is not determined by such a decision the high court shall decide between them by the system of lottery now it is on you to find a certain case where this kind of system had appeared question number 65 is regarding the home rule league which started in 1960 there were two leagues any basin league the uh, league of tilak the league of tilak so we also had a previous year question on this that the uh, satyagraha sabha satyagraha sabha Satyagraha Sabha was started by whom? So this is also homework to you all. Now, with respect to Home Rule, uh, rule League movement, their demand was yes, formation of linguistic states. Yes, that was also a demand. Education in vernacular language. Yes, that was also a demand. Promoting political education to arouse a sense of pride in the motherland. Yes, this was also a demand. Plus. the element of swaraj that is self rule that is self rule here the idea of swaraj was self rule on the basis of irish home rule league movement this movement was started now in the context of freedom struggle raj gopal chari formula of 1944 See, there was a stalemate situation that was going on during the 1940s because the Mah the Muslim League was constantly pulling uh, towards we want a separate nation we uh, we want the sovereign uh, state where all the Muslim uh, people would would safely be there, right? So this Raj Gopal Chari, one of the stalwart politician, he came forward and he gave a formula that. he gave a formula that till the time that after after the uh, world war world second world war let us have a plebiscite in the let us have a plebiscite in the muslim majority states in the muslim majority province provinces and let them decide by plebiscite now if they decide to go away then we can form a uh, a different so a different uh, A, dif a separate country, and uh, we can decide in terms of defense, foreign affairs after the formation. And what this will be only valid. This will be only valid if the England are permitting us to do this. So, so it was to seek cooperation of Muslim League with Congress in forming a provision 
ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट द खुड़की सिस्टम और द खुड़की सिस्टम वॉट इज दिस खुड़की सिस्टम इट इज द टाइप ऑफ यू नो ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ ब्रिटिश इन इंडिया दिस दिस गोमस्तास गोमस्तास वेर द एजेंट ऑफ गोमस्तास वेर द एजेंट ऑफ ब्रिटिशर्स नाउ दिस गोमस्तास दे यूज टू गिव एडवांस टू द फार्मर्स नाउ बाई गिविंग दिस एडवांस बाई गिविंग दिस एडवांस दे यूज टू टेल देम टू ग्रो अ सर्टन टाइप ऑफ अ क्रॉप फॉर एग्जाम्पल द इंडिगो नाउ दे वुड क्रिएट अ मार्केट इन सच अ वे in such a way that the indigo would not be uh, purchased by anyone rather than themselves and this is why the economic exploitation of the farmers that started and this system of forceful um, of forceful growing of a certain crop is known as the khurki system so it was the economic exploitation tool used by british planters to force riot to sow the indigo plant regarding indigo plantation we have many in, uh, elements that is regarding indigo so indigo se related we have the indigo riot or you can say the indigo commission was established in 1860s so indigo revolt is there we also have neel darpan neel darpan that was written by deen bandhu mitra deen bandhu mitra so it was a play which depicted the plight of the indigo farmers later on we have the khad bandhi system we also have the teen kathiya system where 3 by 20th part of the land of the farmers was forced to cultivate with the indigo and this thin kathiya system now was uh, was the result why the uh, farmers or their revolted after that we also have the champaran satyagraha which is related to the indigo planters so many of the things are related to indigo go through all this indigo plantation and the movement associated with this yeah then we have the 69th ko 68 question 68 question which of the following conspiracy cases are related to communist ideology this meerut conspiracy case meerut conspiracy case yes it is related kanpur conspiracy yes this meerut and conspiracy case where the communists were arrested just because uh, the british thought that now they are not safe for us and they will any time they will create a, a what you call they can attack the government so that is why they were arrested so that on the pretext that they are creating some kind of conspiracy against the government peshawar conspiracy case now after 1920s this people in uh, people in the north west region of india they were not satisfied with the non cooperation movement and now in uh, in the tashkent this uh, mn roy has already started what you call known as the communist party of india now he has already opened a school now this uh, some of the muslims in this region in the northwest region they goes there they learn the techniques of they learn the techniques over there of fighting and now when they are returning when they are returning from the tashkent region tashkent region here they are caught near peshawar region here they are caught in the peshawar and now they are uh, the trial is run against this people that is known as the peshawar conspiracy case now what is this alipur conspiracy case it is related to the manaktala group the manaktala group which was making the bombs in uh, near calcutta so rest are associated with the communist ideology whereas alipur conspiracy is uh, not related to that question number 69 69 is about akbar again a question on akbar is asked so uh, akbar's religious policy promulgation of new religion that is din e ilahi yes 
he uh, which of the following were a part of religious polity promulgation promulgation of new religion then a ilahi but yes you also uh, need to be very careful as a lot of historians do debate that was it a new religion that uh, akbar tried to bring in or was it some kind of a socio theory that he put forward so yes but din e ilahi uh, he did start it this din e ilahi construction of ibadat khana this ibadat khana has already been asked in the previous year question that what is ibadat khana at fatehpur sikri so this was a place this was a place where we used to call the people the uh, the people from different different religions to talk about what are the different aspects of religion abolition of pilgrimage tax yes this is also correct so all these three are related to akbar prayag prashasti very very important with respect to the uh, the ancient history so prayag prashasti means the allahabad inscriptions it means the allahabad allahabad inscription now this allahabad inscription of this is uh, a inscription of samudra gupta samudra gupta where hari sena his court poet hari sena his court poet he has written in sanskrit this alabad prashasti and he has written about various victories this samudra gupta has achieved at different different places his who are his enemies who were his uh, friends till what his extent of the empire is what is the uh, hobby of samudra gupta so everything he has written prashasti prashasti now on this same alabad pra, pra, inscription or the uh, prayag prashasti we also have the inscription from inscription of ashoka and later on of jahangir and later of of jahangir jahangir is a mughal emperor with reference to buddhism and jainism now a question again on buddhism jainism very important with respect to your preliminary exam jain orders jaina orders admitted only men whereas buddhist sanghas admitted both men and women this were this was incorrect because buddha at the start admitted only men and when his foster mother he requested buddha that time this women were admitted now both believed in the middle path no Buddhism believed in the middle part, but uh, Jainism believed in the extreme form that we have to be uh, extreme, and that is what you get Nirvana, that is enlightenment, moksha, salvation. Brahma Deya. Now this is a very easy question. Brahma Deya was a kind of land that was given to Brahmanas, and it was tax free. So Brahma Deya. Uh, so different different land given to persons have been mentioned in your books now which arrange the following events chronology is our second round table conference the second round table conference very very easy 1931 after the gandhi arvin pact just remember the uh, significant significant some of the events such as gandhi arvin pact 1931 of gandhi arvin pact it was uh, one of the main issue or main uh, thing why the gandhi arvin pact was signed because they wanted this congress to participate in the second round table conference which they did not in the first right so this is in first the foundation of all india student federation 1936 here is we see some kind of left orientation that is seen in the society and even in the politics the first independence swaraj divas 1930 26 of jan 1930 this day was celebrated and that is why we too also uh, celebrate this swaraj divas in the form of republic day in today's india right so the answer to this will be 3 1 which of the following were associated with the independence for india league 
now independence of india league as this people were not satisfied with the with the nehru report they started this independence for india league and also one of the most uh, important thing that influenced the formation was the idea of socialism and who were the people jawaharlal nehru subhash chandra bose also we had uh, other people such as srinivas ayyengar yeah srinivas ta ayyengar to organize the independence for india league for complete independence which was uh, passed in the lahore session if you analyze the lahore session of 1929 they had this complete independence that is purna swaraj resolution was passed by the indian national congress 75 was the bardoli satyagraha now this bardoli satyagraha this was organized because the rate of revenue or the rate of uh, land revenue was increased by the britishers and that is why to oppose this to oppose this sardar vallabhbhai patel led this bardoli satyagraha and so withdrawal of enhanced land revenue was the issue in terms of the bardoli satyagraha now we will move after 75 we will directly move to 88 yeah 89 veer shaivism veer shaiva movement now who was this veer shaiva is not correct with respect to veer shaiva now this veer shaiv shaivism they are strong uh, they are the one who are strong shiv bhakt or the strong who are affiliated to shaivism now they are also known as lingayat if majority of the uh, majority of this uh, religion you can find in the southern maharashtra or the karnataka region so basavanna one of the greatest saint ever lived so he has uh, started this movement so they strongly argued for the equality of human beings this is the correct statement it questioned the theory of rebirth it allowed remarriage for widows it endorsed the feeling of jainism no it did not endorse the feeling of jainism basically if you analyzed right so veer shaiva was an anti establishment movement this is evidenced by the fact that not only was the religion of defiance of brahmanism it also opposed jainism now question number 90 the president of india is bound to act on the aid of advice tendered by the council of ministers this is this is a constitutional provision this is a constitutional provision the uh, article 74 provides article 74 provides that a council of minister which is headed by the prime minister to aid and advise the president uh, in exercise of his function now uh, after now after yeah before 42nd amendment there was an ambiguity there was an ambiguity but the 44th amendment 44 amendment uh, it 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 added that the president can send the advice back to the council of minister for reconsideration and if it is unchanged if the council of minister same send the same advice he had to accept it he has to accept the advice when it is uh, unchanged in the second instance so this is a constitutional provision which of the following circumstances parliament may make a law on any of the matters enumerated in the state list in the state list so uh, this is a very interesting question very interesting question if a proclamation of emergency is in operation yes it can make a law on the state for implementing any treaty agreement or convention with any other country yes it can make on the state list if the rajya sabha passes a resolution then also it can make a Uh, make a law on that even if some of the states this ask or request the center to make a law then also it can make so with ref- 92 with reference to organization of state legislatures with organization with respect to state legislature consider the following there is no uniformity in the organization of state legislature so yes this statement is correct there is no uniformity at times uh, there are 
you know unicameral some states have unicameralism some are bicameralism so no uniformity in the organization of state legislature the constitution provides for abolition or creation of the legislative council in state yes it does provide the parliament has the power now the state the government can abolish state the government cannot abolish if the legislative assembly of the parliament passes if if the state legislature passes such a resolution then the parliament can uh, can abolish not the state government so answer to this is 1 and 2 now this statement 93 is very correct all the statement about governance are correct over here question number 95 which of the following are mentioned in the constitution interstate council and gst 279a so interstate council and uh, goods and service tax council are mentioned rest that is the zonal council and the north eastern council both are statutory bodies they are not mentioned in the constitution which of the following are incorrect 97 question number they are asking you which of the following are incorrect parliament can declare the powers of the state legislator are to be exercised by the parliament it is not parliament now we are talking here about what are the consequences of imposition of president's rule so here they are asking that parliament can declare the power of are to be exercised with by the parliament so it is the president who declares that now the state government or the state legislators powers are to be exercised by the parliament that president dismisses the state's council of ministers in the time of president's rule yes the governor carries on the state administration yes he carries when there is a president's rule with the help of state council of ministers this is incorrect he carries it with the sec help of secretaries appointed by the president so we are uh, covered with our uh, portion of so pradhan mantri avas yojana this is a state central sponsor and they are identified on the basis of stcc that is socio economic consensus by the gram sabhas so this statement is also correct so 99 is simple 100 100 all the statements are correct with reference to p o c s o protection of children from sexual offense act of 2012 it covers both physical sexual crimes as well as child pornography on the internet it has raised the age of consent for consensual sex from 16 to 18 yes this was the change that was made and it is applicable to any child irrespective of the gender so this is about uh, so the, all the statements are correct answer to this is one two and three now we will be moving towards the economy portion